In the words of one of their best-known songs, what a long, strange trip it's been. Most recently, from Marin County, north of San Francisco, to London's Archway. Their followers will find this hard to believe. We're really sorry. But the apologize. Grateful Dead are actually back in England for the first time in seven years. They've often been about to come. This time, they've actually made it. Tonight, they're giving the first of four concerts at London's Rainbow Theatre, a decade and a half after they emerged to become the house band of the extraordinary West Coast revolution of the late 60s, the psychedelic era. For many of their followers, that era has never gone away. In Britain, styles have changed, changed and changed again since the 60s. In America, the Reagan presidency would seem to be the antithesis of everything that the Grateful Dead and the San Francisco scene stood for. But Jerry Garcia, now an avuncular 38, insists that the lifestyle is alive and well. The community out of which we sprang, or that we're part of, is still a... Uh, uh, pretty vital and uh, all the same people that we were involved with uh, in the uh, mid-60s and the Haight-Ashbury and so forth, they're still pretty much doing what they were doing then, but they have, the difference is now they have 15 years of experience under their belts and, and uh, have gotten to be experts at what they do, just like we've gotten to be experts at what we do, sort of. Looking at America as a whole, though, what would you say all that movement in the 60s has achieved now. Oh, America's quite a different place than it was. When we first started touring, America was just, uh, was still the America, when the post-war America, it was still America of the 50s, really. When we started first going down the road, right around 67 or so, and uh, I mean, it was, a lot of times we would come to come into a town and they wouldn't let us into the hotel, whether we had reservations or not. Not here, you know, you're not coming in here, you know. So that they saw long hair and, and eccentricity of any sort, you know, that was it. Back in 65, before the Grateful Dead had acquired their present name and before the drug LSD had been made illegal, Garcia and Weir played at Ken Kesey's famous acid tests, a mixture of dancing, free expression and drug taking. later author of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and Bob Hunter, later the Dead's lyricist, had been paid to take acid during tests in a local hospital. They kept taking it. The acid tests mushroomed to far larger gatherings. Be-ins, or free concerts, at which the Dead, along with bands like Jefferson Airplane, provided the music. San Francisco was, for a time, the center for every liberal cause, and the effects spread right across America and beyond. The psychedelic era influenced music, films, politics, and lifestyles. In San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury, the hippie dream was later to turn sour and become commercialized. Peace and love didn't have an easy ride. Protests against the Vietnam War turned dancing in the street to fighting in the street. But the dead kept playing, and often for free. They had no obvious star performer like Janis Joplin or Grace Slick, and their non-commercial approach made them a genuine underground band. It wasn't just their attitudes that brought them a legion of followers around the world. Their lengthy concerts involved an increasingly sophisticated, partly improvised mixture of rock, blues, country and even jazz influences. 
for the dead, playing live is everything. We can produce the, the same SPO levels, the same sound pressure levels, right. with, uh, with much more compact stuff now. The state of the art is advanced. Yeah, the idea is to communicate music to minds, not just to move great masses of air. I mean, and, uh, what, we, what we accomplished before was that we, physically we were able to move great masses of air with all those speakers, you know. Which, I mean, it amounts to the same thing. What we're re really interested in doing is communicating to minds. <laughs> well, we learn to play our instruments better. We learn to play off of each other better. We learn to listen to each other better. And at this point, we can play more concisely. We can play more music with less notes. There's nothing that can replace playing live for me. I mean, for me, it's... Uh, it, for me, it's like a life's blood. I mean, I have to do it, really. It's, it's important. I mean, I go pretty crazy if I don't get to play. You know, for, I mean, for human beings, not in the studio, you know. Playing live on stage is something that I've done for well over half my life. It's... And, uh, and him, too. Yeah. It, and it's, it, at this point, it's, it's, it's what you dream about when you go to sleep. It's what you, what you think about through, through most of your waking hours and stuff like that. Uh, if you take that away, you have a, you have a shell. Yeah, it's who yeah. we are. It's what we do with our lives, really. to the point of red mistake. 